When we see a set of data points, sometimes they look like they are in clusters, and those clusters are obvious to us. Take for example this, or this. For us, it's obviously the case that the clusters are this. The issue is taking what is obvious to us and making it obvious to an electronic computer. The clustering algorithm dbscan, which stands for density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise, tries to do so. So we've almost given it away with the name, but the obvious intuition that we're trying to transfer over to the electronic computer is the intuition of density. We think these data points are in clusters because there's a lot of points next to each other, and those points aren't close enough to other points. Maybe we could put the concept of density in by saying that points get to be in a cluster if they have a certain number of points of the same cluster around them. This sounds reasonable, but it doesn't work. Here's why. Consider the points on the edge of a cluster. They don't have that many points around them compared to the points in the middle. So if points have to have a lot of points around them to be a cluster, notice that the border of what we think should be the cluster won't be included. So you then might say, okay, I'll make it so points don't have to have a lot of points around them. Well, then it's easy to combine clusters or include points that don't belong. Either way, we run into problems. The density algorithm then needs to consider, like we do, the border points of the cluster to be different from the core points. We don't want to have a restriction that doesn't include the border, but we also don't want to have a restriction that's too lax and lets more than the border in. To solve this problem, we can use the core points to find the border points and make the cluster that way. That's kind of what we do, especially for circular clusters. We find the points that are definitely within the cluster and then go outwards to find the limit of where the cluster stops. In order to do this, we'll need some formal definitions. First, we'll give a definition for the concept of being around other points. The epsilon neighborhood gives the points that are within a distance epsilon of a given point. Now, we want to use the middle points to relate to the boundary. We'll say a core point has to satisfy a decently large threshold of having a certain number of points, or min points, in its epsilon neighborhood. Note that the boundary points do not need to meet this condition. In the epsilon neighborhood of a core point, there can be points on the border, or other core points. We'll define all the points in a core point's epsilon neighborhood to be directly density reachable from that core point. We can use this definition to find clusters. Here's how. We'll start with a point and see if it has enough points, having at least the hyperparameter min points, around it to be a core point. And if it doesn't, we'll pick another point. But once we've found a core point, we'll say it's part of a cluster, so we'll give it a little color like this. Then we'll look at all of the points in that core point's epsilon neighborhood, having defined how big epsilon is beforehand. And we'll say that all the points in this neighborhood are in the same cluster, so they'll get the same color. In this neighborhood, there can be points on the boundary, like this, or other possible core points, like this. So we'll check to see if any of these new core points have unclassified points in their epsilon neighborhoods. If so, these new points that are directly density reachable from the new core point are also included in the cluster. We keep going like this until the whole cluster is found, stopping when core points of the cluster don't include anything new. Then we'll repeat this process, testing the points left that are unclassified until we find a new core point and creating a new cluster based off of that. If some points end up not being core points or directly density reachable from a core point, we'll say that they're noise. This process is the essence of dbscan. Now you might be wondering, does starting at a different core point change the clusters that come out of the algorithm? Kind of like how initializing badly can ruin k-means? Well, the answer is no. All you have to do is to find how big the epsilon neighborhood is, so pick epsilon, pick a metric to use, and say how many points a point needs to have in its epsilon neighborhood to be a core point. This is min points. And no matter where you start in uh, testing to see if points are core points or not, you will get the same result every time.
So to understand why, we'll need some more definitions. We'll say that a point P is density reachable from Q if the following happens. So Q has to be a core point. And so it'll directly reach some other points. There'll be some other points in its epsilon neighborhood. And out of those points in the epsilon neighborhood, some of them might be core points. And those core points will directly reach other points. So we'll say that P is density reachable from Q if there's a chain of direct connections like this from Q, starting at Q, and going to P. Now we can give a new definition of what it means to be in the same cluster. We can say if Q is a core point, then any points that are density reachable from it are in the same cluster. Now here's the fun. Notice how all of the core points in the same cluster are density reachable from each other. To see why, well, suppose one of them wasn't density reachable from any of the other core points in the cluster. Well, by definition, that means that that core point uh, that is not density reachable is also not directly density reachable from any of the other core points. And also, by definition, that means that our core point is not in the same cluster. But that's a contradiction, uh, because we suppose that it was in the same cluster. And so by this proof, all of the core points in the same cluster are density reachable from each other. Here's another important definition that ties everything together. Two points are density connected. If there's a common point, they are both density reachable from. We'll say that if two points are density connected, they're in the same cluster. Now, notice we've already proven that any given core point is density reachable to another core point. And so therefore, any given core point is density reachable to the same points another core point is density reachable to. Therefore, no matter which core point you start at, which core point is the common point for density connection, uh, because they are all density reachable to the same points, they make the same points density connected to each other. This means that no matter which core point we start with to define the cluster, we will end up creating the same cluster. Thus, the only things that we need to worry about in setting up the algorithm are the size of epsilon for the epsilon neighborhood, the metric we choose to define what distance is, and the number of points, min points, there needs to be in order for a point to be considered a core point. So if all that matters is epsilon and min points, well, how should we choose them? Let's first make the following observations about things related to k nearest neighbors uh, so we can understand what's going on behind the hyperparameter selection. So we'll say we have a point P and it has some other points around it. We'll call the distance from P to its kth nearest neighbor the distance D. Now for this example, we'll set um, k equal to four. So we're uh, trying to find the distance from this point P to its fourth nearest neighbor. So we'll do that. And then we'll use that D and create this epsilon neighborhood around P using D as epsilon. And notice with this, uh, P has uh, five points in its epsilon neighborhood. Uh, this is including itself. And so, and when we change uh, K, and so let's say we change it to five, uh, notice that because uh, P has points around it, uh, D isn't changing much. And in this process, you know, when we choose a K, it's not just P that has a distance from the kth nearest neighbor. So setting K equal to four, I mean, look, every single point has a fourth nearest neighbor. Uh, 
This means, well, every single point has a distance from its fourth nearest neighbor. And so in the original dbSCAN paper, they set k equal to 4, they calculated each point's distance from its fourth nearest neighbor, and then they sorted these distances from highest to lowest. They're sorting these points uh, according to their distances. And uh, you, you can see these distances on the, the y-axis. That's what the four dist label on this y-axis here stands for. And um, just a quick note, um, you might be wondering, well, why am I setting it to four? Why don't I just, why don't I set it to five or six or seven or three or two? Well, experimentation by the authors in the original paper found that setting k to a higher value really doesn't change this graph you're looking at. Um, and we also don't want to set k lower, so something like three or two, as then I don't know, maybe we'll start including points we shouldn't include in the clusters, as we saw earlier. So we'll stick with four. Notice on this graph that there's an elbow of sorts, where a steep decline turns into a leveling off. This means that many points are now sharing the same distance to their fourth nearest neighbor, which means they're sharing the same density of sorts. When the four dist is smaller, that means the point is in a more dense area. So at this point where we, where we start leveling off, we, we think clusters are starting to form here. So in, instead of having a, a high four dist value where the value is very um, variable uh, from one point to the next, uh, who knows what its density would be. And then, but after we start reaching the point where the density is more uniform over time, well, that sounds like a cluster to me. I mean, you can think within a given cluster, the, the density of the points that are definitely within this cluster, these core points, are, uh, share this, this, this four disk value. Okay? So, now, notice we have a distance, four disks right here, where there are, we're going to say there are enough points in a neighborhood of that distance for a point to be thought to be in a cluster. Well, this is exactly what we're looking for. And so we'll, we'll set epsilon to be this, this distance where the elbow is right here, and we'll set min points uh, to four. And remember, we're sticking with four because setting it higher doesn't change anything, and having it lower uh, starts to include things that don't need to be there. But just by looking at this graph and um, believing me that four is the is the correct number of min points, but just by looking at this graph, we can find epsilon 